Hello and welcome. In this turbojet problem, we have been asked to find uh, the exit velocity, uh, the thrust, propulsive efficiency, and overall efficiency. We'll assume that the diffuser, compressor, turbine, they all behave ideally. The information given, the cruising speed, is obviously the inlet speed V1, velocity at state 1, is the same as with respect to the engine. That's what we see, the inlet, the, the aircraft speed is the same as speed that the diffuser sees. Uh, the conditions are 50 kPa, so pressure and temperature at state 1 are given, as well as the diffuser inlet area. So everything about state 1 is given to us. We can find state 2 because it's isentropic to 2, and the velocity will be converted uh, to a very small velocity, zero velocity, so pressure will rise. From 2 to 3, we have the compressor with a pressure ratio of 10, therefore it's also isentropic, we can pin down state 3. From 3 to 4, we have this combustor where heat is added, Q dot in is added, and in this combustor the temperature at 4 is given, so therefore we can find state 4, and state 5 is isentropic to state 4 and also uh, the, you know, the turbine between 4 and 5 produces just enough power to supply power for the compressor. In other words, H4 minus H5 must be equals uh, H4 minus H5 must be equals uh, H3 minus H2. So this energy balance will help us figure out state 5. And finally, from 5 to 6, we have an isentropic nozzle. At state 6, the pressure is same as at, at state 1. So that will help us find velocity at 6. Once we know velocity, 1 is given, of course, and velocity at 6 is found, then the thrust is mostly the momentum thrust, m dot v6 minus v1 divided by 1,000 to get it in kilonewton. And the thrust, once you know the thrust, we can find the propulsive power. Basically, it's uh, propulsive power is thrust times the velocity of the aircraft, which is V1 in that case. Once we know the propulsive thrust, the overall efficiency, the overall thermal efficiency means uh, the uh, overall equals P divided by Q dot in. Whereas the propulsive efficiency means uh, its, its definition is the propulsive power divided by propulsive power plus the power that is wasted in increasing the kinetic energy. In other words, you know, the air is coming at V1, so, but we are throwing it out at velocity 6, which is not used anymore. So the wasted uh, kinetic energy really is m dot times V6 squared minus V1 squared by 2000. So we add that to the propulsive power and that gives us the propulsive efficiency. Okay, uh, chapter 8 in your textbook, uh, you know, goes over all the theory that you need to know. So let's go ahead. I have already uh, generated the solution using test codes. Uh, let me just walk you through what I have done. Uh, in the I.O. panel, I have declared the overall variable, P ratio, and, and, and maximum temperature. This is the compression ratio of the pressure ratio of the compressor. So state 1, as we already stated, P1 is known, T1 is known, and the area of the inlet, the velocity at 1 is known, and I think the diffuser area, area is known. So that gives us the mass flow rate and all other variables. State 2 is the isentropic state at the exit of the diffuser. So the velocity becomes zero at the end of the diffuser. Entropy remains constant. And of course, the energy equation will produce J2 equals J1 because there is no heat or work transfer. You can show that J remains, the flow energy remains constant in diffusers and nozzles. Okay, so this is our state 2, exit of the diffuser. At state 3, we have heated up uh, sorry, at state 3, we have increased the pressure by using the compressor. Uh, from It raises the pressure from P2 uh, to P2 times uh, P ratio, uh, that is by a factor of 10 in this case. And entropy remains constant, mass flow remains constant, so state 3 is found at the end of the compressor. Then we take it to the combustor, 
and raise the temperature at state 4 to T max. Pressure doesn't change, muscle doesn't change, so state 4 is found. At state 5, we have the turbine producing, uh, the turbine produces just enough power to run the compressor. And the energy balance I talked about is shown here. Uh, that gives us H5. And entropy at the exit of the turbine is the same as the entropy at the inlet, the isentropic turbine. And that produces state 5. Okay, now let's go to state 6. 5 to 6 is the isentropic nozzle. At stage 6, the pressure is already P1. Again, notice that uh, the, the flow energy remains uh, constant, J5, J6 equals J5, and also entropy remains constant, isentropic, and the pressure is known. And we have to make the velocity unknown here, uncheck it, so that it can be calculated. Remember, by default, velocity is uh, set as 0, so if velocity is set as 0, you will not be able to enter all these uh, independent variables. You have to make velocity at 6 unknown. Well, so now that we have found the velocity uh, and, and the, all the states that we need to find, in the graphics panels you can go and check that this is what we expect. And in the device panel, we can, we can just cross-check that everything is okay. State 1 is our diffuser. There is no work transfer. If we do a calculate, it should produce a Q dot of 0, which is pretty close to 0 here. In the compressor, similarly, 2 to 3. The compressor power is negative, minus 11, 5 to 9. And we've got to remember the turbine power should be exactly the same as this, if we are correct. Device 3 is our uh, combustor. And as you can see, heat is added, 3 to 4. The entropy generation is negative because the boundary temperature is set, you know, left at its default. If entropy generation was, we wanted to find that, the boundary temperature has to be realistic. In this case, it should be above 1500 Kelvin. In that case, you will find uh, as dot gen will become positive. State 4 is the turbine, and notice that the power output is exactly the same as what the compressor demands. Finally, state 5, if we have where, uh, sorry, the device 5, we have the nozzle. And the nozzle, obviously, there's no work. And the solution shows Q dot equals 0, which we expect. So all the devices are consistent. Um, there is, in the IEO panel, we can now calculate, you know, the thrust, etc., which I have done on another window to reduce time. So the thrust is given by M dot 1. Vel 6 minus Vel 1 by 1,000. And as you can see, similarly, propulsive power, wasted kinetic energy, propulsive efficiency, and overall efficiency are all defined here. And if we do a calculate, we should get all their values in the I.O. panel. Uh, so you can see we have solved for uh, the thrust to be 29 kilonewton, propulsive power, of this many kilowatt, uh, and more efficient. Well, if look at the efficiency, is only forty-five percent is the propulsive efficiency, and overall efficiency is very small, twenty-five percent. So notice that the propulsive efficiency uh, will can't reach hundred percent if the wasted kinetic energy is zero. And how can that happen? If if the v if v six and v one are equal. Uh, the propulsive efficiency will be very high. So think about it for a second, that if, if V6 and V1 are almost equal, that means, what is V1? That's the speed of the aircraft. And what is V6? It is the jet velocity, at which speed the jet is going out. So, so if the aircraft is flying close to the jet velocity, you get the highest propulsive efficiency. So that's why VJ is, you know, in a jet engine, VJ is very high. So, uh, so the, the plane has to really cruise very, very fast, close to V6, get to get high propulsive efficiency. So that's why, you know, turbojet engines like this are used only in very high-speed military aircraft, where V1 and V6 are close to each other. So you want to select a jet engine for a given cruise speed where V1 and V6 are close to each other. That goes into the design of jet engines. 
uh, matching the jet engines with a given aircraft.